Hi, welcome everyone. Um, we'll just wait a couple more minutes for everyone to get logged in and then we'll begin shortly. Okay, hi again. Um, thanks for joining us um, for the new KPNL attendance reporting webinar. Welcome. This is Kim speaking. I'm a new family engagement specialist that's joined the team recently in the past few months. And with me is Visteria Oliver, who you all know, I think. Yeah, hi everyone. <laughs> um, so uh, you should have already received some emails about changes in attendance reporting, but we just wanted to provide this webinar as well as a space to go into a little bit more detail, but also give you all a chance to ask questions if you have any. So as always, the webinar will, the webinar will be posted on YouTube after, and we will send you the link um, when it is done. So if you want to watch it again or send it to anyone else, you can do that. Um, so we're going to begin with some objectives. Just one moment. If you can't see the PowerPoint screen, go ahead and send us a message, but you should be able to see it. Um, all right. So what are the objectives for today? We want everyone to understand how the attendance reporting procedure has changed and know how to accurately, accurately report attendance. So those are our two main goals. Why is this important? Um, at CCR, we have to track the number of children and caregivers who attend KPNL to provide to our funders, and with accurate attendance, you can better understand the impact KPNL has. And next, Wisteria will talk a little bit about um, the required changes. Okay, so hi, everybody. Um, so first, I just wanted to say, um, you know, why we're making these changes at this time. Um, it's definitely better to have more complete data um, and collecting more detail in our attendance numbers and you know where families and children and their caregivers are showing up um, will allow us more flexibility in reporting. Um, in the past, we haven't had a ton of capacity uh, to collect and track um, a high level of detail with this. We try our best. Um, but now we're actually in the process of developing a database to help us with our um, kaleidoscope work and our FFN work. So we're gonna have a lot more capacity um, to get a lot more detail and also um, get some better numbers and a more accurate picture of you know, where um, kids and their caregivers are um, throughout both the county and the state. Um, so the changes are that um, we will now be collecting participant counts of individual groups instead of um, combined by organization. So um, for example, if your organization has four monthly groups that you all host, um, we will be collecting four um, attendance count or attendance reports um, instead of one report uh, combined for your whole organization. Um, and this, so obviously this change is only going to affect organizations that offer more than one kaleidoscope group. Um, organizations that only offer one, they're gonna be reporting just the same. So this is the form. Um, that the new form that we're going to be using. 
Um, it looks pretty similar to the form that I've been sending out <laughs> each month in the past. Um, the only differences that you'll notice is that um, we put a spot on here for the facilitator's name. Um, that's just going to help us uh, know where to go if, you know, if we have any questions or if, you know, something's, uh, something's confusing on the form. It's just going to help offer a little bit more clarity as to what group we're talking about. Um, the other thing that we have here that's new is the location of the group. Um, the location um, or the address is going to help us differentiate which group it is that this report is for. So, for example, if you're an organization and you offer groups at library A, B, and C, um, you, you would want to write, you know, for example, library A on group location or just the address, or something that helps differentiate um, your groups apart from each other. And this might change. We're just kind of trying this out um, for the first go round. I'll be sending out forms that look like this um, at the end of this month for you to report your January numbers. And um, I also wanted to note that um, organizations outside of King County actually um, do their reporting a little bit differently. They report to a regional um, contact person. And so um, if you are outside of King County, your regional contact person might have a form that's different than this one, and that's totally fine. Um, this is just the basic information that we are gonna require here at CCR as the headquarters of you know, Kaleidoscope Play and Learn. But um, just definitely work with your local um, organizational contact, um, the person that you normally send attendance to, work with that person to make sure that um, whatever reporting form that you're using is, um, is gonna meet their needs as well as CCR's needs. And of course, if you have any questions about that at any time, feel free to reach out to me or to your um, regional contact person. Um, and then another thing I wanted to mention is some organizations, they offer a lot of groups. We do have uh, one affiliate organization who offers 20 groups, and um, it would be a lot to send in 20 of these. It'd be a lot for, you know, the organization to do that, and it'd be a lot for me to receive 20 of these from one organization. So um, if you are one of those organizations that's offering several groups in the community, um, feel free to check in with me about a different way to do your reporting, because I believe we could uh, make some accommodations for those organizations that um, offer several groups every month. And so um, the instructions for reporting attendance, they're basically the same. Um, we're counting the, uh, the number of FFN caregivers. We're counting the number of parents. We're counting um, the number of people who come who are bringing both their own children and um, somebody else's children, you know, serving as an FFN provider for somebody else. And we're counting the number of children who are um, under six years old as well. Um, so everybody has been doing a really good job of reporting attendance thus far, um, but we just wanted to provide this uh, kind of recap or refresher of the different categories that are gonna be captured in our reporting. And um, we also, we also wanna get unduplicated counts. So we need to know each month when you're reporting your attendance, if, um, if somebody is brand new to Kaleidoscope or if they're a returning um, patron of the group. And um, we have some examples here. So for example, a person who is new this month, that would be participants who started attending during the current month. So for example, if Sarah started attending August 15th, 2017, she would be counted as new for August. And then an example for a returning family or a returning person at the group means a participant who started attending any time before the current month. Um, so for example, Sarah from our, from our last example who started in August, if she attends again in September, she's now gonna be counted as uh, returning in September and going forward. And so um, at this point, I'll just quickly stop and see if anyone has any questions about any of this. 
And um, if you do have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat or the question box, or you can simply take your phone or device off mute and just speak. Okay, so I do see one uh, question popping up from Kathy. Okay, so Kathy, you're unmuted. Yeah, I wondered, um, is new, do we start over each year with the, the new calendar year? Um, no, you, you don't need to start over each year. Um, some of our reporting is actually like done by fiscal year, so it goes from July to June anyways, so um, don't worry oh, about okay. starting over. It's just for ever, like if they've ever been to collect. Oh, okay, that's what I was thinking. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, you can continue. Then one more. Oh, you want to go over this? Um, so yeah, this is just kind of what we were talking about and what um, Kathy's question was about, just um, new versus returning and um, that's, and we keep track of new versus returning so we can get that unduplicated number and accurately report and know how many um, children and families and caregivers we're impacting. And we just want to take a moment to go over sign-in sheets a little bit, um, which are the documents that you all use in your groups for caregivers to sign in. Um, you are welcome to use any of the sign-in sheets that CCR provides to you, but you don't have to. Feel free to customize them um, and make them your own and use those instead. We don't have a preference, um, but we do want to remind you that we do not need um, for you to send us those sign-in sheets or any other related docu documentation, um, just the monthly report forms that Visteria went over earlier in the presentation. Um, so this is an example of um, a sign-in sheet that you can use. And if anyone has any questions about sign-in sheets or tips and advice on how to um, co um, collect it within your group, um, you can speak now or type into the box. Some people have trouble sometimes with them and some people have great suggestions. So this would be a good time to share that. Looks like uh, Kelly might have a question. Okay, and it looks like Kelly has asked, um, if families attend both locations, are they counted as returning? Um, I believe the guidance that we've given for this is that um, no, they would not be accounted as returning because, um, so Kelly, for example, if you offer a group in your North Campus and then you offer a group in your South Campus, um, we're just going to count um, the the new versus returning or the amount of times the family has been to uh, one of the locations. So um, sorry if I sound confusing. Um, so basically they might end up being counted twice, um, you know, if you're offering groups in several locations, but that's okay. We're just trying to get the numbers as close as we can. And um, I think overall um, the amount of people attending Kaleidoscope is underreported anyways. So I'm, you know, we kind of just have decided that if um, if families are attending groups at multiple locations throughout the community, they might get counted twice, but it will probably equal out in the end because overall, um, we believe that it's underreported. So that's a great question and it's not perfect, but um, I think it's the best we can do at this point. Okay. Oh. <laughs> So are there any other questions related to sign-in sheets, um, attendance, unduplicated at all? Um, you can continue answering those or any concerns that you may have in general. Um, if you can't think of any now, that's okay. Um, in the future, um, Mysteria is always available by phone and email or email <laughs> yeah. um, to answer any of your questions. And 
thank you for attending the webinar and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks everyone. Um, you'll be, you'll, you should be receiving an email from me shortly with the new forms. Um, and thank you for tuning in and we will um, send a recording of this webinar out later on. And if anything does come up later or that you forgot to ask, just feel free to check in with us. Okay, bye.